Hi and welcome. Today on Art Joyous Sharing, which is my sister channel where I do live videos with Chelsea each Thursday, 1030 Central Time, we were talking about alcohol and alcohol ink and alcohol in art. So you can see I'm filling up uh, a little needle point uh, container. These are containers that you can get from Amazon. And I have the link below to my Amazon store if you're looking for these products. Um, I put them in my store. And that's where you can find all of the things that I use and like. But they have a cute little uh, silicone cap that goes over the needle tip. And uh, you can also find these um, other tools that I'm using here. This is a, a little... Uh, what do they call that? Um, yeah, pipette. <laughs> Good grief. It's a pipette that I was sucking that out with. And then I've got this other uh, canister that has a feed on it uh, that I pick up the alcohol with. And, you know, you just push it and it pumps the liquid up to the top. I used to use these when I worked in manufacturing. They'd put things like acetone and stuff in them. And so it was a way, safe way to dispense this liquid. So beside me, I have this palette, uh, which is a Tim Holtz palette. And that just has drops of the alcohol ink in it. And you can use uh, alcohol blending solution in a pen and move... Uh, that color around. I'm showing you how I fill up these containers with uh, different products. You know, they come in larger, larger containers, and I like to put them in these where I have a little better control. And I'll put my blending solution, my 91 proof uh, isopropyl alcohol, and that sort of thing into these smaller containers. And uh, these are little um, applicators that you can get for alcohol ink. Uh, they just go on the end of a tool, and Ranger makes this tool. I have the older model, which is kind of a rectangular piece, and I just cut my own felt to go on those. But, you know, I still have them in my stash because I've used them for years, and uh, they work. So, you know, if you see them around at a garage sale or something like that, you can pick them up. Or I've even just done this with a hook and loop on a block of wood before. So you can do it whatever way it works for you. Another handy tool to have around are these alcohol wipes. You can get those from your drugstore. Um, it's what they use for sterile wipes, but it also will clean up uh, things off of a page or, you know, move alcohol around on the surface of something. I'm going to use a number of different tools today. You can use what you have in your stash. This is a hair dryer that has a cool setting. I'm also showing um, non-porous papers which include UPO and plasticized papers. Uh, alcohol ink is meant for use on non-porous surfaces. Now that doesn't mean that that's the only surface I'm going to use today. You can see I have plain paper and UPO out on my desk and I'm going to use both of those in my projects. So uh, let me move these things aside and I'll show you what I've got planned. So another tool that I have in my stash is this uh, air compressor. I got this when I was taking a class uh, learning how to teach Copic coloring. And um, it's you can load it with the different Copic colors and use it as uh, air, spray, paint, or um, you can use the blender in it to blend out color. Or you can use these blending pens, which work just as well. You fill them up with the blending solution, 
and put it down on the paper. And the newest one is on the top there. And the older version is on the bottom. I also have this Arteza water reservoir brush that I put alcohol into. And you can just use a regular paintbrush. Uh, you can see that I have a lot of different containers with uh, solutions in them, whether it's blending solution, the uh, mixatives, the additives, the um, alcohol, whatever. It's just handy to have them in different sizes for different applications. So here I'm going to show you, I'm taking a stencil and one of these alcohol rubs and I don't want it too wet because I don't want it going underneath the stencil. But what I'm doing is removing some of the alcohol ink that is on the surface. Now I'm having a little bit of difficulty because I realized later that I had actually already sprayed this with a fixative. Um, <laughs> so I was having to scrub kind of hard. Um, you, on the other hand, should not have that kind of difficulty. So now I'm using an alcohol lift ink and I'm putting that down with one of those applicators, one of those felt applicators and rubbing it through and lifting it with just a kitchen towel. And you can see that I can get the design from that stencil with uh, a little bit of effort. So that's one thing that you can do with stencils and alcohol and UPO. Now this is alcohol lift ink on a pad. So I'm just re-inking this pad and I have both plain paper and the UPO paper and I have a rubber stamp. So what I'm gonna do is stamp onto a piece of UPO paper that's already got color on it. Um, I see I have a dirty stamp here. So the first thing I have to do is clean the ink off of this stamp. So I'm going to grab a piece of paper after I get done cleaning up my glass. Sorry for the glare. So with a piece of UPO paper, we're going to start applying some alcohol inks. And um, I have an assortment. I have uh, several different brands. I have some Marabou. I have some Ranger. I have some Pinatas. Uh, I have the Copic. Um, trying to think what else. There's there's any number of of these alcohol inks out on the market and you may already have some in your stash use what you have uh, don't go out and buy something unless you really feel like you have to have a specific color or something but I'm starting off with this uh, blue marabou and then I'm going to grab some copper and add that into the blue some I put in that little needle tool and now I'm going to move that around with that air compressor. See how easily this moves across the page and you get a lovely wispy background. I'm going to add some more uh, alcohol to that. And yeah, I mean, that would be a gorgeous background just as it is. But now I've decided to add some deeper colors because... Where I'm going with this requires uh, a little more alcohol ink on the page because I, I want it dark enough that you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing here with this. But you can see how easily these are moving around the page. A little bit of uh, alcohol, a little bit of mixative, a little bit of uh, alcohol ink. Come back in with some more alcohol to get it to move. And uh, if you want it to blend out, add the blending solution so that it's blending together. 
And if what you want it to do is to move more, then add the alcohol. So um, I'm just moving this around on the page, getting some color down because we need the color for the technique that I'm going to do here. So I'm just playing with the ink, moving it around. Now there are any number of tools, like I said, that you can do this with. You can do it with canned air, you can do it with compressed air, you can do it with a straw, you can do it with a paintbrush, you can do it with the hair dryer. Here's the hair dryer coming out, you know. So uh, you just don't want to put heat on this. Just remember it's a cool air that you're using. So now I'm going to grab my uh, stamp positioner. This is a Tim Holtz one. It's not on the market anymore, but there's any number of other stamp positioners. I think you can still get it if you're in the UK or overseas. You just can't get it in the US any longer. So I'm going to look at this and see where I want to position that. I'm going to um, clean my stamp. Make sure I've got all the black ink off of there. And then I'm going to add some of that alcohol lift ink because what I want to do is lift the alcohol ink from that UPO paper onto that rubber stamp. Now I'm going to add just a regular piece of cardstock and I'm going to stamp that. And You can see that all of that alcohol ink there is transferring to that cardstock. I'm going to do it again because I want it a little bit darker so that you guys can see it. So I'm cleaning it up. I'm going back to the alcohol ink, lift ink, and then I'm going to stamp it out one more time and get a little darker impression with that stamp. Now I'm going to use the kitchen towel and I'm going to lift the uh, impression that we made with the alcohol lift ink on the original UPO piece. So I'm just pressing it to uh, get any of the wet spots up. And then I come back and buff it a little bit with that kitchen towel. And that is how you use the alcohol lifting. So I decided to turn these into some cards. So I'm just getting some cardstock out in different colors that are going to coordinate with the colors that I've used in alcohol ink. So I'm just trimming out some cardstock. Uh, I've made cards for years and years, so I've got lots of cardstock and lots of choices here. And I'm going to look for some liquid glue that's going to give me an opportunity to move these pieces around a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I never have been real good about making things straight on a page, so I need that wiggle room. And you can do that with some uh, liquid glue. Uh, this is the, um, what is it, Art Institute glitter glue. It works really well. I've got a number of different ones out here. I just, that other one I couldn't get to flow, so uh, yeah, so there's the uh, image, and now I'm going to find a uh, die cut or something to go on the top. Um, looking at this, and I think I like the thanks, but I need to color it so that it coordinates. So I'm just getting another one of those tools with the alcohol ink and uh, dabbing it on, and then I got to dry that piece. And then I will glue that to the front of my card. Now you can embellish this more or do whatever you want. You know, put a ribbon or a, a bling or something on there to finish it out. But I think for a simple card, this uh, works just fine. And I'm trying to straighten this up a little bit because I'm not the best about making things straight either. But that's card number one. Then for this card, I'm going to trim it down and then I'm going to uh, cut some uh, shapes into it. I'm just showing you how you could use that. Uh, thanks on over the top. Um, you know, when you're die cutting, think about 
other ways that you can use these pieces. And these extra little pieces that I'm trimming off, yeah, they can be used on cards too. So don't toss them. They've got a lot of beautiful color on them and they can be used for trim or something. So I'm just going to do a window pane style uh, card with this one. So I'm cutting down a piece of cardstock, uh, just half a sheet of cardstock, and then I've got another plain piece that I'm going to trim out another quarter inch so that that'll be mounted up uh, on some um, dimensional adhesive. And then I will glue these pieces down. And of course, they're not going to be straight, and I'm going to have to wiggle them around and get them where I want them. But you guys get the idea. So you can see the stamped image in the background there. And then I've got my thanks die cut. That's going to go right over the top of that. And then I will get some dimensional tape. Uh, I've had this roll of dimensional tape. I can't tell you how many years. They last forever. Um, I bought it in a big roll, and it was, I don't know, about 15 bucks when I bought it. I don't know what they go for now. But I'm still using it, and this is years later. So I'm just going to pull down the uh, release paper get that lined up on my card and then I can pull that out and so there we've got two cards for the price of one using alcohol lift ink. Now I've got this other little die cut and this piece of uh, alcohol ink background that I had created and I'm going to glue that up because I think that would make cute card. Um, the theme for the hashtag for the month of May for Art Joy Sharing is hashtag AJOS Magic. Each month in our Facebook group, Art Joy Sharing, we do uh, different challenges, and one of which is the hashtag challenge. And so for this month, it's AJOS Magic. We also have AJOS uh, Pick a Stick Challenge and AJOS uh, Mood Board. So, I mean, you can, you can find all of those uh, hashtags and things in the Facebook group and join the fun each month and create using the prompts that are given in those hashtags. So I'm going to trim this down. This is a 4x4 four four die. So there's not a lot of wiggle room on the card front because the card front is four, what is it, four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm just using those strips to add another color to uh, give it a little more dimension on the page. And I'll glue that down. And then I will pick a sentiment or something to go on the bottom of that card. I'm going to just run over and die cut a few things. So I have an assortment of small uh, dies that are words that are great for cards, you know, joy, smile, create, hello, thanks, that sort of thing. And so I cut several of them and am pulling them out, trying to see which one I want to use on this particular card. So some of them get stuck a little bit. You have to use a pokey tool to push them through the back of the die, but you can see I've got an assortment of words there now to pick from. I think I end up using that hello. I think that's cute for this little uh, fairy. 
my little pixie. And uh, kind of make a mess with the, the glue once again. So I'm just mopping up the excess. It is one of those that's going to uh, dry clear, so I'm not too worried. But there's that stencil piece. There's some more um, alcohol ink pieces. And so I'm moving along, see, seeing how much I can get done in this hour and a half. So now I'm going to grab some more Yupo. And I'm going to change up the colors because we've had the blues and the greens and the purples. Now I'm going to go more towards the yellow, red, orange family. And this time I'm going to grab some of those pearl uh, alcohol inks. Now I don't know if it's that mine are getting old or if it's just the nature of the pearl inks that you have to shake and shake and shake them because it seems to me that the mica has separated in these pearl inks because they're getting kind of gloppy on the page. But I really like the end results uh, by the time I get done adding all the colors and the gold into it. Um, I'm going to use this uh, duster, one of those canned air canisters to move the ink around this time. But can you see how granulated some of that is just from um, the mica that's in the pearlized stuff. So I'm going to use another piece of Yupo and I'm going to pick up the excess and see if I can pull some of that mica off of the sheet here. It did kind of a little dendritic look, but I still see those crusty bits on there. Uh, wasn't quite the look I was looking for, but okay. I'm going to keep working with it, add a few deeper drops of color and some purples and that, and uh, make it look a little bit richer. Add some gold. Got to have gold in there, right? And then I will spritz it with some alcohol and come back with that canned air and move that around across the page and get that... Uh, lovely variegated look that you get with all of those colors and the uh, gold. So now I'm back to my compressed, uh, yeah, <laughs> air compressor and you can see the gold shimmer on that piece really gorgeous. I really love that piece. And here I'm trying some other dyes out on top of these pages to see what I like. I think I like this one because it's got the gold around it. So I'm just going to trim around this piece. And that pretty much wraps it up for what we were doing for today. Uh, it's an hour and a half show. If you have time on Thursday morning, come and join us. For the hour and a half show and uh, work along with us you know talk to the other people in the chat you know we're always happy to have people there and share ideas and uh, join the community join our Facebook group uh, we'd love to have you there also just remember to answer the questions so that we know you're a real person and uh, yeah I'm trying to Keep things clean and get rid of the glare and yeah those are still wet so it's picking up ink so I'm trying not to pick up ink and show you what I did for the show today so thanks for being with me if you like this content and uh, you're new to my channel please sus consider subscribing liking sharing all the things that let uh, YouTube know that this is uh, content that is of value to you and I will see you all again soon and uh, happy art. Bye.